President Eisenhower, whose eight years as chief executive come to an end at noon Friday. Good evening, my fellow Americans. We now stand ten years past the midpoint of a century that has witnessed four major wars among great nations. Three of these involved our own country. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. Now this conjunction of an immense military establishment and a large arms industry is new in the American experience. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. And thought it should not have been done. We just thought war was terrible enough as it was. I cannot uh, trace the evolution in my uh, dad's thinking. He was complex. He was a five-star general, but he was never a military fanatic. Never. One night in July of 45, that day, the Secretary of War had told my father about the development of the atomic weapon, atomic bomb. We were sitting up in his bedroom, and he said that his own first impression, his own emotion had been to, uh, to be feeling down low. We, he wished we hadn't been He was the first to acknowledge that a permanent military establishment would be required during this period, but then unless we could find some kind of breakthrough, that in fact it would end up creating a terrible cost. The cost of one modern heavy bomber is this. A modern brick school in more than 30 cities. It is two electric power plants, each serving a town of 60,000 population. It is two fine, fully equipped hospitals. We pay for a single fighter plane with a half million bushels of wheat. We pay for a single destroyer with new homes that could have housed more than 8,000 people. This is not a way of life at all. In any true sense. Under the cloud of threatening war, it is humanity hanging from a cross of iron. My father, as president, had strong, guiding principles. He used to say modern weapons take food from the hungry and shelter from the homeless. And so he was fighting with the Pentagon all the time for asking for too much and Congress for giving it to him. I don't think we should pay one cent for defense more than we have to. Well, Eisenhower saw us starting to build program after program that was just out of control. And his own ability to shape national security policy was being hemmed in by these forces he couldn't control. And he was the president. On at least one occasion, Eisenhower was heard to say by those in the room, God help this country when somebody sits at this desk who doesn't know as much about the military as I do. My fellow Americans. This evening, I come to you with a message of leave-taking and farewell, and to share a few final thoughts with you, my countrymen. We have been compelled to create a permanent armaments industry of vast proportions. Three and a half million men and women are directly engaged in the defense establishment. The total influence, economic, political, even spiritual, is felt in every city, every state house, every office of the federal government. We recognize the imperative need for this development, yet we must not fail to comprehend its grave implications. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Warnings about foreign entanglements and things like that. And my dad was giving his warning against letting this military industrial complex get out of hand. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes.